The Pilgrims survived in the Plymouth Colony thanks to the compassion of Tisquantum, or Squanto, a Native American who showed the people how to grow crops. The colonists responded with such thankfulness that they unintentionally founded the American national holiday of Thanksgiving. The Pilgrims are some of the most iconic colonists in America, and their journey on the Mayflower is part of the Thanksgiving tradition every year. Even though most people think of the first Thanksgiving when they think of the Pilgrims, these people brought many other things to America in their search for a land to practice their religion in peace without outside influences. The Pilgrims were part of the Separatists in England, a religious group who opposed the Church of England. Even though England broke away from the Catholic Church, King Henry VIII did not do this for religious reasons. Instead, he wanted the freedom to divorce his wives without needing approval from the Pope. The Church of England was still very similar to the Catholic Church, and the Protestant people in England were displeased with this change. As England wrestled with the Reformation and the line of succession, religious persecution became the norm, so people like the Pilgrims began to leave the country. At first, the Pilgrims were only looking for somewhere that they could practice their Christianity in peace. They believed their more straightforward form of worship and life was pure and closer to the Bible's original purpose. The Puritans wanted to purify the Church of England. The Separatists wished to separate from the Church of England and form their own church. In the early 1600s, the Pilgrims left England and moved to the Dutch Republic, one of the few countries in Europe that was relatively safe for Protestants at the time. At last, the Pilgrims had found the religious freedom they were looking for. However, the Dutch Republic was not the paradise they wanted. The Pilgrims had difficulty getting jobs, mainly because they did not speak Dutch. They were also worried that their children were slipping away from the faith. As the kids grew up, they began assimilating into the Dutch culture. The Pilgrims began looking for somewhere else that they could build their own church, practice their faith, and separate themselves from outside influences. With all this to balance, they finally turned their sights to the New World. After a fair amount of negotiating, the Pilgrims obtained permission from the English crown to build a colony and received the necessary financing from a merchant company. They leased the Mayflower, a typical merchant vessel, and boarded it in 1620. The Pilgrims weren't the only people on board the Mayflower. The merchant company had sold tickets to anyone who could pay for the passage. So, the Pilgrims found themselves sailing for the New World with a host of people who did not share their separatist beliefs. The ship was crammed well beyond capacity, and the journey was long and filled with dangerous storms. The Mayflower had set out long after the summer sailing season, so the Pilgrims found themselves battling the autumn storms, which pitched the ship on swells and dips that could reach 100 feet tall. The people were wet, cold, and constantly thrown across the boat as the Mayflower struggled across the ocean threatening to fall apart at any moment. Despite the perilous journey, only one person died, and the one person who fell overboard survived. The Pilgrims had been on board the Mayflower for several months by the time land came into view, but there was a big problem before they even set foot on land, much less planned the first Thanksgiving. The King of England had granted the Pilgrims land near the Hudson River. The autumn storms had driven the Mayflower about 220 miles northeast of that point. With no hope of traveling south, they decided to settle right where they were in modern-day Massachusetts, but they were well outside any European rule. The Pilgrims could not abide a lack of law and order, so before they even got off the Mayflower, they did something they had never done before. These ordinary people drew up the Mayflower Compact, a historical document that would go on to influence the founding of the United States of America. Number 1. It Proclaimed Self-Governance in the New World the travelers on the Mayflower had been granted land in Virginia, but because they landed in Massachusetts, some non-separatists argued that they should be able to do whatever they wanted. They threatened mutiny, saying the laws and regulations no longer applied to their new colony. The colonists needed to act quickly to keep their colony together, even before they disembarked. They needed some form of government that they could construct rapidly to prevent a rebellion and survive the winter. While still aboard the Mayflower, the Pilgrims composed and signed the Mayflower Compact. At this time, governmental power in Europe came from a king, but they didn't have the luxury of waiting for the King of England. Instead, the governmental authority had to come from the people themselves. Even though the Mayflower Compact promised allegiance to the King of England, this was also the first time self-government had been established in the New World. The Pilgrims joined themselves into a body politic to elect a governor and a few assistants to run their colony. 
annual elections were to be held, and the job required that the winner tend to the specifics of running the settlement. The Mayflower Compact was written in haste out of necessity, which is why they introduced self-governance into the New World for the first time. The Pilgrims did not intend to declare independence or break away from the English government. They only wanted to keep their colony together in a strange wilderness, and self-governance was the only way for them to do it. Number 2. It Promised Just and Fair Laws To establish a communal government that everyone would agree to follow, the Mayflower Compact also promised just and fair laws. It may seem strange to us that the Mayflower Compact was fair, women did not have voting rights, and the non-separatists did not have a voice in the compact's creation. However, the agreement specified that the laws must benefit everyone in the colony, and it kept them from falling into anarchy. For the colony to survive, the pilgrims needed as many law-abiding people as possible, so they set up this temporary set of laws. Current and future laws had to be for the colony's good, and everyone agreed to live by these laws. The compact also stated that colonists would live in accordance with the Christian faith. While this may seem non-inclusive to us now, the colonists were not thinking about religious freedoms at the time. While not everyone on the Mayflower was part of the separatists, almost everyone in Europe belonged to a Christian denomination, so they were familiar with the practices of the Christian faith they would have seen this stipulation as a natural outgrowth of living in a new colony together, even though we now value multi-religious communities. 41 adult male colonists signed the Mayflower Compact on November 11, 1620. Although the compact set laws for the colony and established a precedent for keeping the rules just and fair for all, it did not settle the questionable rights that they had to the land. That would not be resolved until June 1621 when the Pilgrims obtained a patent from the Council for New England to settle the Plymouth Colony. Number 3. It Organized One Society, Despite Religious Differences Part of the threatened mutiny centered around the non-separatists wanting to separate from the religious group. They wanted to go and start their own colony. The Pilgrims had been the people to create and organize this voyage. The other group had been added to fill the ship and provide the merchant group with the primary profit source. The two groups had clashed during the journey across the Atlantic. The separatists had held themselves apart from the others. Even though they had different religious beliefs and practices, neither group would have survived the winter if they had separated. So the Mayflower Compact also ensured that the two groups would create one society in the Plymouth Colony. As one society, all the colonists worked together to promote the welfare of their community despite their differences. Of course, the separatists and the other passengers had disagreements and squabbles during the first winter, but the Mayflower Compact kept the two groups together, even as over half of the colonists died from starvation, exposure, or disease. Number 4. It was an important step toward colonial democracy Although the Pilgrims did not intend the Mayflower Compact to be revolutionary, it was the earliest attempt at democracy in the New World. The Pilgrims elected a governor every year, and the first governor was John Carver, but he died in 1621. William Bradford took over and was re-elected 30 times in the next 35 years. The governor and his assistants were elected by the civil group politic, composed of all adult men except indentured servants. However, as the colony grew and more towns were added, it became harder for all men to assemble from the increasingly scattered population. They established a general court instead of a civil group politic. By 1639, towns were sending representatives to the general court, giving representative government its start in the new world. Even though the separatists held much of the power, the principle of communal consent in the government still was an important step in the democratic evolution of America. Democracy spread from the Plymouth Colony across New England and then to the rest of colonial America. It evolved through town meetings and larger local governments, settling into the political outlook of the American colonists. Even though the Pilgrims were not looking to declare independence from England, democracy eventually did lead to the American Revolution and the desire for freedom. The Mayflower Compact laid the foundation for self-government and democracy in the United States colonies. It even influenced the writing of the Constitution over a century later by starting the idea of law by the people. This is the heart of democracy, and although the Mayflower Compact had faded into history by the time the Founding Fathers gathered to write the Constitution, the idea of democracy was still deeply embedded into American political philosophy. Number 5. It maintained the colony until it joined the state of Massachusetts The Mayflower Compact was not a constitution, 
although it most closely resembled the separatist church agreements created by the pilgrims in England and Holland. These church agreements were structured around self-government, with the adult male members electing their ministers and church officers and the people deciding how to properly worship in their church together. Although the Mayflower Compact does not include descriptions of worship, the pilgrims used their church agreements as the model for the Mayflower Compact and its political self-governance. Some historians have argued that the Mayflower Compact was essential to getting the pilgrims through the first winter because it cemented their dedication to each other. The first winter in Massachusetts was colder than the pilgrims had prepared for, and the unsanitary conditions of the Mayflower left the colonists ravaged by disease. They were trying to build their first homes during the New England winter, and by the end of February, they had 11 small buildings for the 45 survivors and a growing graveyard. While some people may have abandoned the project, the compact kept the colony together through their harsh first winter as the people struggled to care for each other and grieve the loss of loved ones. When the spring finally arrived, the compact also carried the colonists through their first interactions with the Native Americans and many years of growth afterward, becoming the foundation of the colony's government. In fact, the Mayflower Compact was so successful that it remained active until the Plymouth Colony joined the Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1691. The Pilgrims survived to become one of the most famous early American colonists, thanks to the Mayflower Compact. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Mayflower, check out our book, The Mayflower, a captivating guide to a cultural icon in the history of the United States of America and the Pilgrim's journey from England to the establishment of Plymouth Colony. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.